Great to be back. And uh, our guest today is Dipankar Mukherjee. Dipankar is a um, uh, is is a very accomplished person. He's the founder and director of Readomania. Readomania is an independent publishing house based in uh, India. Dipankar is based in the NCR. Uh, under his stewardship, the house has produced more than 80 books in five years. Uh, Dipankar has an MBA from uh, the IIT Madras and has been a management consultant uh, in his professional avatar, where he's worked in organizations like IBM and Ernst & Young. And apart from publishing, he also has business interest in consumer electrical products with a brand called Aeronova and a literary resort of sorts called Far, Far Away Rents. Uh, he loves traveling and can be found playing with his daughter, if not at work. So that's a quick summary. And uh, I was mentioning to Dipankar earlier also, for all the folks who were there during last time sessions, Tanushri Podar spoke very highly and repeatedly mentioned uh, Readomania as you know, her publisher of choice with whom she's published many books. So uh, it's quite, uh, quite a nice coincidence that last week was Tanushri and now this week Dipankar is here. And, you know, he's the actual founder of Readomania. So uh, that's, um, it's always nice to have that kind of uh, you know, positivity. So uh, uh, interesting journey that you had Dipankar. So why don't you start by telling us about uh, you know, your decision to become a publisher or how did that whole thing come about? Because that's not a very commonplace choice for people. Um, thank you, Chetan, for the wonderful introduction. And hello, everyone at the FBC Club. Uh, I must say that what uh, Chetan mentioned about you donating to the Chirac School is a very noble effort. And I think I'm very, very excited to know about uh, this activity. So this is very interesting. Coming to my journey and why publishing, well, there's no straight answer to it. I love writing books, reading books. And uh, after my nine years of career, I thought that uh, that was a time when I could jump into something that I like and pursue that as a career. And hence, I took time off from work for about six months, did my research, and picked up an area that uh, interested me. And that's how we built the publishing house. Uh, we started off with an idea of building a publishing house first, followed by a reading app. So uh, we're now in our second stage of our uh, evolution where we're building a reading app, which is going to be called Readomania app, launch, to be launched very soon. Uh, so far, we've got about 150 plus books. It's not 80 Chetan. Uh, I guess I sent you the wrong bio. It's 150 plus books. And uh, we've got um, a few award-winning titles, uh, a few critically acclaimed titles. Uh, so it's a good, it's been a good journey uh, so far uh, for books. And uh, we do a lot of uh, education in creative writing. We run another program for school called the Young Author Program under which we train school kids to be able to use their writing skills for, uh, you know, uh, multiple purposes. We are also actively in creating content in otherwise not so interesting journals. So typically when you look at the industry, uh, the industry uh, always picks up genre-specific work. So it has to be either a thriller or has to be horror or has to be romance or has to be, uh, you know, something around a predefined genre. We've worked consistently to break these norms and try and focus around books which have a bit of everything, you know. So uh, that's worked for us. And we are also known for short stories. So we do a lot and a lot of short stories, at least two, three physical collections and at least seven to eight um, uh, electronic collections every year. That's fantastic so, to hear. <laughs> yeah. Because I think so, short stories is such a major, like homeless uh, genre. It's great to hear that. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a homeless genre. It's just looked at in a very different way. You just need to know the right way to look at it. So I think more about that later in the uh, session today. But yeah, that's the journey. Oh, that's fantastic. So let's talk about short story because I'm really interested. There's so many people who write it. It's such a um, fun genre to read also. But for some reason, you know, when you, I'm just reacting to how the industry generally writes about it. But when you look at, you know, uh, websites of literary agents or web, websites of some publishers also, they almost always say we are not looking at, you know, poetry and, uh, and short story are the, on the, you know, struck off the list almost. So why is that? And what's kind of, what drives your decision to support that uh, genre so much? Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> uh, when they say it is not a part of their list, it's because 
most of these publishing houses, the big names, they don't talk about print runs below 2,000 or 3,000 or 5,000. Okay? Now, that kind of a critical mass can come in with either a best-selling name or with a lot of marketing dollars pumped in or with something which is very massy and not classic. With short stories, the whole agenda is different. Short story is, is popular. I must say popular. As a matter of fact, if you look at all the successful reading apps in the country, they're thriving on short stories and not yeah. on long form. Okay. Yeah. So uh, whether you pick up Juggernaut or you pick up Pratilipi or whether you pick up Readomania, the website, we thrive on the short story genre. Now, why is this that the print format is so difficult to publish? It's because of the commercial viability of a project. Okay. Now, typically, when you look at a book, irrespective of what it is, for a publisher, he needs to or she needs to make money out of the book, right? And the money out of the book will come in only when they sell a specific number of copies. Yeah. That mathematics goes wrong for a short story collection. And that is where publishers like us have come up with a very different format of this. We don't focus heavily on uh, distributing the book across the country. Because, for example, you know, if I send a short story book to Lucknow, Hell, the entire lot will come back. Not a single copy will sell. But if I send short stories to buy since Delhi, it will sell from there. So you have to pick and choose your centers and points where you want to send your book, specifically a short story collection. And that way we uh, make it a very niche area. And that's okay. worked for us. Okay. okay. So you work with a limited print run. You work with a specific type of uh, uh, distribution policy. And that works. The second important fact with short stories is that, unfortunately, short stories has not been treated very well with the, by the writers as well. <clears throat> now, uh, anybody who's taking a break between novels writes a short story. Anybody who wants to collate their blogs into a book convert into a short story collection. Mm -hmm. The entire premise and the original thought behind a short story is somewhere lost. Okay. A short story is not meant to be preachy. A short story is not meant to give you, uh, you know, a, 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 a similar experience as long form. It has to be quirky, quick, interesting, doesn't need time to build up, and should hold your thought through the first five paragraphs. Mm -hmm. All these are sorted out in a short story that you're writing. The short story is a hit. And add to that, if you have a small twist here and there, it works. Then you can build a genre. You can write short stories in horror. You can write in thrillers. But these these pointers remain same. Okay, now where where do people go wrong in short stories, and why do they fail miserably? A, uh, they try and showcase the language more than they showcase the story. Okay, now a short story is too little time to showcase your language. Half the time, people get lost in the language and not in the plot or the characters. Second, they're not able to justify the entire plot or the entire character sketch in 3000 words. Mm. A short story is far more difficult to write as compared to a long form. So these things don't work uh, always for a short story writer. So you really have to be a, a, a master of the art to be able to uh, dole out uh, a short story. Okay, as a matter of fact, I can see Shalini here on the screen. Hi, Shalini. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, uh, I have worked with Shalini uh, on her work. And, uh, you know, uh, we've discussed that it takes a lot of effort to be able to balance out uh, what you're trying to communicate through the shorter form. She's writing, she's written a bunch of novellas, which are very exciting. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we may be able to work together on the book. So, you know, it takes in additional effort to be able to do justice in the shorter number of words that you have for a short story. Right. That answers my, your question. Yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. So uh, tell us about other genres. Are there, you know, uh, are, are that Readomania focuses on, are there um, other specific zones that you look at? Yes, or is it, we do. Yeah. So um, we uh, look at thrillers. We look at uh, mythology, historical fiction. We look at uh, period drama. We look at romance, but not too much of uh, young romance. We are we are more focused on mature romance. 
uh, we do a lot of non-fiction, we do a lot of children's fiction, in children, mostly adventures, and uh, probably a, a bit of uh, retelling of old classics. And we have, I guess that's pretty much what we cover. There will be a few societal books also. We have a policy of bringing out one societally relevant book every year, right. uh, a few short story collections every year, and the rest is a combination of what I spoke. Okay. And, uh, you know, I would imagine that as a, as a big established publisher, like a Penguin or a Bloomsbury, you know, you have this huge backlist and you have a lot of established authors uh, uh, in your kitty already uh, with whom you have uh, contracts. So that gives you the bulk of your revenue if, you're, if you have a very long history. Uh, but as Readomania is a relatively young organization, would that mean that a younger publisher like Readomania is more interested in discovering new talent and this and and you know putting out work by new writers or uh, you know how does that whole thing fit to uh, one big lesson that we have learned in our journey of six years is that <clears throat> talent new talent is very exciting is very good but new talent has a huge risk they come with a baggage that they want to be bestseller in the first go itself and if the experience and outcome is not as per the expectations. They switch off completely from either supporting the book or writing further. So we've now become very um, careful in how we interview the author after selecting the book. So we have a rigorous round of talking to the author multiple times. Um, it's it's I know it's it sometimes can get harrowing for the author to reply to those questions, but we want to be sure of the intent of the author. Many times people take writing a book as a PR exercise for themselves. Mm. We rather would focus on authors who love the art of storytelling and want to write more in the long term. So one book can't make you an overnight success. Yes, it can if you have loads and loads of money to pop in in marketing. Otherwise, in the last 10 years, if anybody goes and does the research, they will know that there's not been a single genuine bestseller in the market. Mm. Okay. So let's say a, a new uh, author does want to approach you. How do I mean, is it, is it uh, through a lit agent to the company you directly, no, no, no. So, both of the above? How does, and what's that journey like for typically, you know, for you to screen a manuscript so, or, a, or an application submission? Submission happens through both literary agents as well as direct uh, submissions, uh, which we call as an unsolicited request. Uh, we go through the initial submission, which is typically a combination of author profile, sample chapters, and the concept note. If we find it interesting, we ask for the full manuscript. Between the first email from the author and our response, the usual time is three to four days. Sometimes it stretches to seven days. After we reply back on the seventh or eighth day and ask for the full manuscript, it takes us about a month read through and find out about the book. Sometimes the month stretches to two or three because some additional research requires, for example, you know, sometimes you find a similar story out there. So you have to go and get the book and read the book and see, are there chances of plagiarism? Are there chances of being picked up completely? What is the, what is the chance that both are similar? So and so forth. So after all this, um, let's say between one and three months, an acceptance note goes to the author or a rejection note goes to the author. Uh, let's say in case of acceptance, then we send the draft agreement to which the author responds. There's a back and forth for a couple of days or sometimes weeks. After the agreement is signed, the book is then placed in the queue. The queue could be as early as three months, as late as eight or nine months based on the genre and the type of book. And then about three months before the release date, editorial work starts along with cover development, which then progressively moves forward into printing of the book and then automatically into distribution and marketing. Okay. All right. And uh, that's very helpful because that's the kind of visibility we don't normally get. Uh, and uh, what about the this process of, um, you know, the selection? Clearly, I would imagine you're not looking at all the submissions yourself. So do you have, uh, uh, you know, people who are full-time employees who are looking at that? Do you hire people on, on internships or contracts who are looking at the applications, the unsolicited, sub, unsolicited no, no, no. submissions? The, the, submission is one area. See, for an independent publishing house, 
they do a fewer number of books. For example, in, in the entire year, the maximum books that we ever do is 24. We don't cross 24. Okay? Oh so if no. you're done 24 in November, okay, next two months, no books. That's how it is. Okay. So um, we don't have any uh, outsourced people to look at this content. It's me and the managing editor who look at the entire list together. Okay. Our submissions, when they come to us, we have a predefined, let's say, an Excel format where uh, we have all our variables listed, what we look at. And we just go through a, a mechanical check of this is there, 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 they're taking the off. If the mechanical check of all the things happens, then we go and open the book or rather the submission in terms of detailed reading and read through it. And then we go and look at our list, do some research, find out, and then go forward. But most importantly, two things should click. Number one, the author profile. Number two, the concept note. So if these two elements are, uh, are tick in the box, chances are that the entire email and the submission will get read in detail. Many a times what happens is, now why is an author note important? Many times people write an author note like a resume. Okay, so we don't want to know about your resume, we rather want to know about who are you, where you come from, why are you writing, why exactly this form of creativity and not some other form of creativity. And why is it that you are writing this content that nobody else can replicate? See, the whole idea is, which is very important for every author, how do you define your niche? How do you segregate and differentiate your writing from others? Because if you don't, chances are that over the next couple of books, you will probably lose interest in writing because you will not get traction. If you don't stand out in the market, there's no traction in there. Standing out again doesn't mean marketing. Standing out means your writing should be different. Either in terms of the uh, themes that you're targeting or the plots that you're using. Or the... Hi, we're picking up a child speaking. Can you please mute yourself? Yeah, sorry. Or the kind of characters you're developing. There should be something unique about what you're doing. Okay. Okay. And that's very important. And that's how you stand now. Okay. Right. So, so yes. yeah, no, that's, that's, that's helpful. So now um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, you mentioned the importance of marketing a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So uh, where does that fit in the larger scheme of your evaluation of a submission? Uh, an author's uh, marketing ability to market or their social or their visibility basically in different formats. How, do, how much is that important? So I'm going to give you a generic and a specific answer, generic for the industry, especially for radio media. Never assume in today's world that you've written the book and your job is over. That's not possible. The reason being, uh, publishing house has a list of books. Yours is one of them. Okay. They will market all the books equally. Okay, but for your book, you would be the only person focusing on it. So marketing is a part of your job. Having said that, what kind of marketing? Well, that is something that you should decide whether you want to go and stand on top of a building and shout, I have written a book, buy my book, or you want to go very subtly about it and approach people slowly and steadily about the book. So that's your choice, how you want to look at it. Okay, But remember, even if you're, if you're looking at a career for yourself, Okay, you do market yourself and your content and your skills in a career market as well. A book and an author is no different. That's a generic answer that I'm giving. For Readomania, there are two categories completely. Category number one, where we are confident about the content and we know we can market it independently, whether the author supports or not. Okay, in those cases, we don't even ask the author. So what are these genres where you don't even bother asking the author about marketing, number one, nonfiction. Number two, um, thrillers and supernatural stories. Number three, mythology. These three these three areas, we don't need of support in marketing. The moment you step out of these genres, okay, in genres which are not top of the mind recall for general audience, that is where you start wondering that will I get any support from the author in marketing? Now, what is the support that we are looking at? Support that we're looking at is do not just write and disappear. Be available. 
for promotions. Nobody is asking you to spend money on the book, but engage people with the book. You have to shamelessly talk about the book because it's your book. Like we shamelessly talk about the book because it is our book. You should also shamelessly talk about the book because it's your book. Learn to engage with your audience because engagement drives a lot of community and network. And like any other industry, this industry also thrives on community and network. So for example, bloggers. Okay? Bloggers are warm to the publisher. Bloggers will respect the publisher and publish the book. Okay, But if they get credit to the author and the author is giving them some special attention, the bloggers are over the moon and they'll give you a return special attention. They'll go out of their way to promote your book. Similarly, bookstores. Okay? When you go and put a book in a bookstore, they don't fly off the shelves on their own. They have to be picked up by a reader. A reader can pick up a book, especially from a new author, only in three circumstances. Number one, he is a very mature buyer and is browsing through the entire shelf to find out your book, which is most probably kept spine-wise and only the spine is visible. Okay. Number two, the bookseller is recommending your book. Or number three, it is stacked up somewhere in the book as a visibility. Okay? Right. Stacking up is paid. You pay for it. Okay. A uh, book lying in the shelf and assuming a, a mature reader walking into buy the book, your luck. But the third factor is in the author's hand. If you go and walk into a store nearby and be friends with the, uh, with the bookseller and say, hey, look, this is my book. This is my background, you know. to recommend goes a much, much, much longer way in promoting your book. So these small, small things are what marketing constitutes of. It doesn't mean go and do a paid boost on Facebook or Insta, or doesn't mean that go and dance around on an Insta reel and make everybody, uh, you know, uh, look at your book. It doesn't work that way. Mm, okay, so. Uh... In terms of the, uh, you know, um, in terms of the, 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 some of the shifts that are happening in the industry, and you know, it's it's quite interesting, and I've I've been wanting to discuss this with a lot of people, um, you know. So we had this uh, on our blog. We have these two blog posts. One is, um, uh, you know, traditional publishers of India, and then we have self publishers of India, right? And uh, um, on the traditional publisher list, we are repeatedly getting comments from you know people we don't know, who are saying that uh, you know you've got these people listed as traditional publishers. When I went to them, uh, they were asking for money, and it was like a self-publishing uh, uh, you know conversation. So uh, in we are seeing this uh, repeatedly, you know, one after the other. Typically, with uh, obviously not with the penguins and the Harper Collins of the world but with, with some uh, one-off smaller publishers. So have you heard of such stories? Uh, do, you, do you know why something like this might be happening? Uh, you know, what, what's, is, there, is there any insight that you can help us with on, on this phenomena? Can I request uh, the recording to be switched off for one minute? Sure, no problem. Uh, let's open the session to questions. Yeah, we'll open the session to questions. There's a lot of questions in the chat. So um, the first is uh, Ram has asked, I don't have a great SM following, not active on SM social media. Does that make my author profile less attractive? SM is actually one of the worst things in, that has ever happened. I strongly personally believe uh, with or without SM doesn't really matter. See, social media used to be a good method of communicating and telling the world that the book is a right. But now there's so much on social media that even Going there and telling them doesn't make a difference. As long means of telling and reaching out your audience, you're there. You don't need social media. So, for example, let's say you've written a book on horror. Okay. So, step one: find out who is the target audience. Don't go, uh, you know, uh, on a blindfold method and target everybody. Not everybody reads horror. Okay. So, if you have a defined audience, that okay, I know that young adults read a lot of horror. Where do I find young adults? Can I tie up with schools? Can I tie up with colleges? Find your audience. Don't depend on social media. Okay. Uh, so Ram, that's good news for you. 
Uh, Simi has a question. What is the scope for biographies or memoir that, that as a genre? As long as there is a life lesson or a point that is unique, as long as there is a life story which is unique, there is a market for it, scope for it. But if you go to write a biography just because you want to write your own story, you may not have a market. But again, okay, uh, doesn't mean that you need a market to publish a book. You can still go back. See, remember, self-publishing is not bad. Don't don't call it out. Self-publishing becomes bad when you go to a publisher and get fleeced. Okay, yeah. so that is bad. If you want to publish a book on your own, what do you need? A, a good editor. B, a good cover designer. C, Amazon or a printer. Right. So all you need are these four things. So don't call out self-publishing is bad. Call out getting pleased as bad. Mm. That's a great response. No, I agree with that. In fact, now in self-publishing, we are seeing a lot of print-on-demand models coming up from everybody from Notion Press downwards. So yeah, I think absolutely. that's also a change um, in the whole uh, model itself. But my so, only request is that even if you go with a self-publishing house, remember, 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 editing is important. Without editing, don't let your content go out in the market. Once you're stamped that this is bad content, trust me, you will lose half the world. So I wanted to make a quick clarification here because you mentioned earlier that nonfiction is a very highly, you know, high selling genre. Now biographies and memoir are technically nonfiction. So True. what are you referring to when you're talking about nonfiction? Does that include Does memoir or not really? It absolutely includes memoir. And uh, say, for example, we are publishing a memoir right now, which is going to be the memoir of uh, one of the erstwhile uh, TV presenters from Days. Oh, nice. Now, why is it credible? Why is it important? Because there's a huge amount of nostalgia Indians carry with Rudarshan. So anybody would want to know the goings on of in the Rudarshan times. You have a point. That biography, that memoir is important. But now today, if the same person comes and writes a memoir about a personal life, it becomes very average. It what is no story. What was her name? Selma? Somebody help me here. There are multiple names. <laughs> yeah, but there was a rate 10 that I have imprinted on my head from my childhood. So, but yeah, I can see what you're saying. So that's definitely interesting. Salma Sultan. Salma Sultan. Yes. Thank With you. With the so flower much. in her hair and the lovely saris and the pearls. <laughs> yeah. Anybody remember <laughs> Manna Bahadur? The Chitrahar presenter? No. I don't. It doesn't remember. Anybody remembers a uh, gentleman with the beard? I forgot his name. I think He's I remember him. Sunita. There were two. There was yeah, one of the Sunita Tandon. 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 Lean, very lean, wiry he guy. He's Tandon. He's yeah. done a feature film just now. He was in that movie with Akshay Kumar or something. Just now he played the bad guy or something. He's acting ah. now. Oh, okay. Lake Tandon. Lake Tandon. Lake Tandon. All right. Uh, so let's move on with the questions. Um, Shalini just has a very cryptic thing saying, I have a question related Hi. to post-pandemic times. So go for it, Shalini. Yeah, sorry, the lights just went out, so you can't see me. So uh, we've heard a lot from everyone about the pandemic and selling and everything, especially from the bunker also. So my question is a little different. It's about content related to the pandemic. Uh, the specific is that I'm working on a, a, a romance, a full-length novel, where the protagonists are doctors and the pandemic is in the background. So as I'm writing it, I wonder by the time I actually go out with the book, will it be dated? Will people no longer want to read about the pandemic? The pandemic is, of course, the background. But uh, what do you think will be? Because we had people going crazy wanting to read about COVID and Corona. So do you think now it's going to be like, you know, hogya, done and dusted? How will no, it Shalini, be? I think there is going to be a, there's going to be a spurt in content around the pandemic a few okay. years later. Yeah. See, right now it's 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 fresh in everybody's mind and they want to get over that. Okay. okay. So right now may not be the right time to push back something that they want to run away from. But if, give it a few years, it will become a part of uh, common nostalgia. And that is when content will start coming back about, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, internationally, it has already started coming in. The announcements start coming in for next year's list. So you do see three, four big authors writing stories with pandemic in the background. Okay? okay. So that's already been announced. My guess is that in India, 2024 is when you will see a host of books coming out by the A-listers around the pandemic. 
Okay. So Thank we, you. we are both, we are all assuming that the pandemic is past us. So aap sab ke mumi ghi shakar. Uh, <laughs> we'll move to the next question. A series of short stories linked by theme and characters. Will it still be treated as sh- uh, short stories or as a full book? Like, you know, how oh, yeah, you- we've done, so we've done multiple systems. In fact, we hold a Limka book of record for doing India's first composite novel, which is nothing but what you say. A series of stories linked to each other together forming a book. So of course it is, it is up to how you market the book. You could market the book as a collection of short stories. You could also market a book as a novel or technically it is actually a story cycle or a composite novel. Okay. Cool. Great. That's good to know. Uh, Anshuman has a question. Is crowdfunding, uh, one moment. Is crowdfunding a good strategy to get funds for a self-published book? Are you aware of anyone that has accomplished this? Would you know anybody? I am not aware of anyone who's accomplished it. It's a new method. You may try. It may work out. I cannot comment on how and what will it be like. Nagaraju has a question. Um, how do you know that your book editing is good? It's a very generic question, but... Uh, so editing comprises of three levels, developmental editing, copy editing, and proofreading. Developmental editing, again, can be broken down into three aspects. Number one, uh, watertighting the loop, uh, the plot. Number two, ensuring characters are balanced. And number three, setting without any loopholes. Uh, if these three are taken care of, your developmental editing is complete. Next is copy. Copy is aligning your content in terms of grammar, syntax, and uh, sentence structuring. As per the country of language you pick up, you could pick up India, you could pick up UK, you could pick up US. Each of these have uh, standard rule books which have to be followed uh, to go and uh, do the English correction. And last is a proofreading where just before the book goes to print, you thoroughly read the book three, four times to identify errors, if any. Errors are primarily in punctuation marks, in words checking to each other, wrong words going in, wrong reference of time, wrong reference of name, or complete sentences getting mixed up. Okay. That's the composite format of the editorial. So I don't think most writers, uh, uh, Nagaraju, to, uh, to, to add to that, most writers underestimate and uh, under, uh, uh, you know, um basically don't realize what it takes to do a good job of editing and when you're self editing then the quality of uh, the book sits in your lap it's not sitting with the publisher um, so when you're self publishing but even if you're doing going with a traditional publisher you still need to submit a manuscript which doesn't look like a half baked slipshot slipshot job so i would even suggest to people that even before you approach someone like a dipankar with your manuscript Make sure you've really, really edited it, the death out of it, so that there is it's, it's as tight as possible. Then they will do their own editing. That is okay. But even to have a shot, even for people to take you seriously, your work has to come across as something which is absolutely like top of the line, not something which is, you know, eighty percent or ninety percent there. So, Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, there is a comment from Ram, by the way, for Anshuman saying recently a crowdfunded book was published in Canada. So you can probably chat with each other offline uh, if you guys want. You're in the WhatsApp group. Uh, Radhika has a question saying, what's the market like for a memoir about animals and pets on the lines of Marley and me? Good. Okay. We've recently done a very interesting and a very unique book called The Doctrine of Peace. The Doctrine, D-O-G, T-R-I-N-E of Peace, wherein the author has uh, talked about spiritual healing loving of dogs. It's kind of memoir about animals. Interesting. Richard is saying for a newbie author, what's the average money he or she should mentally prepare them to spend to publish a first book, uh, non-self-publishing, these put in brackets. So I'm guessing marketing or any other cost, but what do you think? Is there a budget that's a good number that one should think about? It's like saying <laughs> it's a trick question. you want to show your bank account to your publisher and say, pick up how much ever you want to. That's a wrong way to look at it. 
do not ever ask for budget that's that way you are actually opening up a can of worms instead ask for so what's the plan how do i market it not every place needs money right so for example if you ask me the budget okay any publisher what will i do i will first say okay let me figure out how does it benefit me i will straight away go and tell you okay go ahead and stack up your books in 10 crossfit stores each crossfit store will ask you 10000 rupees or 1 lakh that's the budget go to the airport or airport last 25000 rupees that's the budget 1 lakh 25000 okay that's going to benefit me not you right so if you have a look at your benefit you don't go about asking for budgets in your own you decide how much you want to put forward and keep that money safe for the best possible method okay because publishers will anyways try and you know spend get you to spend more on marketing so don't ask budget is absolutely the wrong number to always take off now i'll give you the areas and the money required for those areas so as i told you the biggest area is visibility in stores okay mm. now visibility in stores comes through stacking of books stacking of books can happen in two modes one through sales relationships number two through paid methods through sale relationships you will have the publisher can put in five probably maximum 10 books as a stack but if you need more than that then you got to pay up okay so typically let's say a uh, uh, a category of store would charge you anywhere between 3 and 10000 for stacking up maybe 50 60 books for a month if you go to the airport okay the airports will charge you anywhere between 10 25000 rupees to stack up your books depending on the number of books and the amount of space that you buy from them okay that's one area of investment second area of investment is pr pr essentially means that you get somebody who can get you press reviews easily okay that's not a very easy task even for the publisher but uh, a pr usually is able to turn around stuff okay the pr budget start from 10000 go up to 1.5 lakhs and you might guess in figuring out how you want to spend and how much you want to spend third category social media i consider it a total waste but if you still want to spend money on social media you will end up spending roughly 5 10000 on boosting various uh, content around the book okay number 4 amazon ads very important very relevant has got a very good sales approach even then the say amazon ads also are getting slowly uh, falling off the shelves because now everybody is doing amazon ads so amazon ads also can run in budgets of 10 to 30000 then comes the google ad again in the budget of 10 to 30000 so these are the areas available where you can put in your money and how much you put in there is completely your choice okay great thanks that's great mautushi has a question how do we get a book edited professionally uh, mautushi i have asked namrita to share a link to our blog post about editors in india uh so we have a blog post on the website dipankar if you have any specific people that you recommend you can tell us that'll be great editors there are quite a few actually uh, yeah. people who are doing good work but remember it's uh, uh, professional editing also is a combination of uh how much you looking at so even editing is a scale you can start with a budget of 10000 and go up to a budget of 2 or 3 lakhs but i would suggest in the process after you finish your manuscript after you finish your uh, self edits your step one is not professional editing your step one is beta reading okay get somebody outside your comfort zone to read your book and give you feedback okay chances are 50 60% of the issues in the book will get uh, removed with the uh, beta reading whatever is left then can be taken care of okay once you've beta read the book you've got the final draft from there then you start approaching uh, publishers the a and b category that i mentioned if you get one of them you don't need a professional editor they have the editors okay so that becomes their cost not yours if you do not land up with a or b that is when you look for a professional editor to then take the self editing down okay uh, we have very little time left we have three four questions so i'll be very quick So Sapna has asked. I have two books self-published on Amazon. The feedback is very good. Can I send it to agents or publishers for republishing? You can, but it is not the top of the mind that they would take it up because they already have a huge backlog. There are thousands and thousands of authors waiting in the list. So reprinting of a book or republishing of a book is not uh, top of the mind for them. Right. Okay. 
then there is a question saying um, are there any suggestions on publishing poetry is there any scope okay poetry is an, again something which is widely available free of cost so why would someone read your poetry is a big question poetry is done very well everywhere but in short print runs don't expect them to be 1000 or 2000 copies 3 400 copies for a particular book if sold is a good number so yes there are quite a few publishers who are looking at poetry but in poetry i have usually seen this buyback model also this is just to add a little bit where some publishers have gone and you know the author has to guarantee that they'll pick up say 300 books so it becomes a quasi self published it's like a you know this new genre maybe we should call it mixed publishing so it goes mostly into that mixed publishing area buyback uh, is not new buyback has been there for the last 10 15 years so there's yeah. nothing new about it Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not saying uh, it's new. But I'm saying that's what I know. Even established poets like Jonah, who teaches for us, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. has also gone with that kind of a model for poetry. Yes. Uh, Subi uh, is a, a writer of ours, a participant from uh, Arunachal. She's asked, "What type of books your publishing house is looking for? Uh, what do you think makes a bestseller?" I'm. Are you asking Subi if you're there uh, more about is it literary writing or is it more? uh you know mass uh, massy writing is that because he's already talked about the genres so what exactly is your question can you clarify if you're still with us yeah the and the question i'm asking is like uh, open genre like in indian market right now what do you think is uh, selling the best so uh, again we, uh, can we say okay i'll take this up last uh, this is the controversial answer that i'll going to give so once you stop the recording i'll answer this question okay um all right so uh, let's stop the recording let's take the answer because we this is actually the last question we are not taking more questions we seem to we seem to have just crossed 1 lakh 10000 words uh, i don't know if everybody has been updating the tracker so a little slower than we would like to see at the middle of the month with 51 participants uh, anybody wants to share what's been going on how things have been i know this whole diwali phase just throws off life completely uh, the whole diwali post diwali chat puja business but any comments feedback thoughts anybody wants to share in the group uh, now would be a great time hi chetan anshuman here hey anshuman uh, yeah chetan so i uh, was really propelled by you know ram's prompts in that fdc4 that somehow uh, you know just pumped me personally to right uh, even for the book that i was writing you know the bible that i was working on my blog and uh, you know just those 200 words so uh, i feel that you know if we can get that somehow again you know i think it's more like a very uh, you know it, it's it's you back in school and you have a you have homework to finish and uh, somebody has to read your homework <laughs> by the end of the day so that attitude somehow works you know so i'm we, talking about are... myself yeah so we are a very uh, non religious secular group but on this one exceptional occasion i will appeal to ram uh, so we all report to ram we all report to ram <laughs> so ram chetan i have one important point to make over here you know uh, don't kill me for it any of you if you are nanorimo fans don't kill me but i believe nanorimo is a is not a good method to write a book because you are under a lot of pressure to produce something in one month's time and eventually what happens is you do a lot of shortcutting and you you are targeting the word count rather than the quality so we have seen a lot of output from uh, uh, so what happens is you end up writing a manuscript and you take a lot more time to correct it and make it better than you would have done if you had written at your own pace so that's okay. my personal feedback okay <laughs> So we'll still push push along ahead <laughs> because that's the reason we the FDC exists. So and, uh, I yeah, go ahead. Something. The yes, manuscript sir. that the Pankar spoke about, I started last year in the FDC, and of course, it looks very different now than it did. So there's something to be said for both the uh, points of view, you know. Right. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. at least I got something to work with. That's how I see it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So and I agree with you in the sense, the Pankar, that. we don't tell anybody that you have to get hung up on quality we do say that it's really about the count we are not giving any feedback or reviews except what happens is people find buddies like shalini and ram have been buddies they wrote a very nice blog post for us about how their buddying worked up so it becomes more like a community where people find like minded other folks in their cities in their genres they work together but there is definitely a very strong energy and we are not a hands off type of model like nanorimo 
our model is a very different one so the fact that anshuman is asking ram to give prompts uh, and we are still new at this yeah seriously we've been one year into it we've done it for about five times so it's a uh, uh, but but when i look at the comments when i look at the action when i look at all the energy um, you know there's definitely value here uh, for everybody who's part of this so i love doing it and i love uh, you know having all these folks uh, as part of this community so yeah definitely and i think you know for me also last last year november is when i finished my manuscript you're absolutely right but that damn thing wouldn't have gotten done if i hadn't uh, if i hadn't signed up for for a goal right so i had the goal now i have realized other areas of research i have realized all the gaps but uh, you know i have something to work with earlier it was just this idea ha kitab khatam karne so but it's still taking forever that's uh, so it's we're not expecting that you'll finish in november and then you know by january you're published wo nahi hoega you but know you'll move can i tell you what happened with this yeah this has been a consistent response we have seen from our own side to nanorima manuscripts uh there's so many changes that needs to be done in the book that the author gets tired of the manuscript and they say okay let me keep it aside and write a new one okay because in a hurry you really really are overlooking a lot of things that again sorry i'm not going to push any of you to not write right but don't set your goal in such a way that you are not doing the background work enough and just going on consistently writing yeah in your plots build your characters then jump into writing that i agree with and i also think that uh, you know like i participated i mean i always moderated but i participated in nano rimo in the in the fdc just once then after that i've not done it again because again i i don't have anything else in me so now it's only the editing work that needs to get done but uh, um, um, yeah i mean you know we can have this back and forth for a long time <laughs> there's one hand i see somewhere uh, which is raised is that a question Um, yes sapna you have a question yeah hi no it's uh, not a question uh, i just wanted to uh, tell about this experience of uh, uh, with fdc so uh, like i said that i have already published two books and this third one was uh, half written over last 5 years like i had done about 40000 50000 words and then i was telling myself that you know i'm so busy and my then my daughter got married and then etc etc so many things and i was wait for like okay i need to have some at a stretch time to write it so i was not doing it it's just that i was not doing it i knew i had to do it and i had all the research work and all with fdc what has happened is that now i have finally set myself the 5 am target which everyone tells that you know you should have a clear morning time so that you you don't get messed up with the day uh, so uh, i don't go after the word count i write as much as i wish to but i'm writing every day and okay. so that is how i'm very uh, thankful to fdc for this all right great well thanks So uh, well, we are past six o'clock. So anybody wants to add a last comment? Otherwise, we'll call it quits for today. Uh, yeah. We'll meet again next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday uh, will be led by Namrata. And uh, Namrata, can you talk a little bit about our guest? We have yes, a very interesting are... guy. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So we are having Rajat. Rajat Obhaykar. Uh, he's his book is Truck Day India and. Uh, he has written about traveling in trucks across india in that book and his book is now going for the second edition and it has also been talked about for translation in three different indian languages he's been a journalist and now he has scored a very good score in the ips exams and he's soon going to join his civil services position so it's between his break that we have found some time where he's attending this session and uh, It, it is interesting to know his journey as a non-fiction writer and for a book to become a bestseller because uh, as dipankar also said non-fiction usually in india is a very selected genre where not everybody is able to make it a bestseller so we are going to be having him next week all right folks thanks again dipankar i think there was true insight that a lot of us got from your answers so it's been fantastic having this conversation and uh, absolute pleasure to have you here so thanks so much yeah Thank you so much for Thank having you, me. Thank you, Deepankar. Thank you, Deepankar. Okay. Pleasure. Okay. Bye, bye. Take care, guys. Bye, bye, everyone. See you guys Sunday. Thank yeah. you. Bye.